Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach, and today we have with us David Cicerelli, who's the CEO of Voices, the world's number one audio services marketplace. David, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks for having me, Mike. Great to be on the show. Hey, you're welcome. I'm looking forward to talking with you because I know that um, being able to pivot and grow and carve out a spot in the business world with competition is so difficult these days. And I know that's what you guys have been working on. So give us a little bit of uh, your background and entrepreneurial journey, and then we'll jump into what you guys are up to. Sure. Well, the, the, the short version of the Genesis story is uh, my background is an audio engineer, and I learned how to record and produce music and uh, opened up a small recording studio of my own. And it's actually where I met my wife, who is a classically trained singer. And she came into the studio to record her singing repertoire. But because we started working together, um, soon other clients would discover this small studio I had, and they wanted to hire somebody for a voiceover. So for phone system recordings, um, some short kind of radio ads at the time. And we started doing work together, myself as the engineer, and Stephanie as the voice talent. And we put up a, a website that soon attracted hundreds and hundreds and now tens of thousands of freelance, uh, all the way from freelance to kind of aspiring all the way up to professional voice talent who use Voices.com as a home to promote their services. And at the same time, um, those uh, clients who might be at an ad agency, maybe a small business that's looking to create some type of audio content, they come onto the website to find the perfect voice to tell that story, to either educate, inform, or entertain their audience. So that's really what we do is serve as that online you know, freelance marketplace that brings these two parties together. And I love how you um, how it started off because you were not thinking <clears throat> that, you know, hey, let me start a studio so that I can do all that. It became like um, unfolding and unveiling and pivoting and and things like that. So I think it's just neat that we need to, as entrepreneurs, be um, aware of opportunities that are around us. And then um, uh, I understand from your bio that then there became an, another need to shift from just audio production to, you know, different angles and avenues in uh, um, audio production. So what does that look like for you guys? Exactly. I think over the last couple of years, what we've uh, really observed and has become our general business thesis is that, uh, Mike, it's this, marketers have saturated the eyes and they need to move on to the ears. So yeah. while there's never been more video content produced for social media, be it Instagram, LinkedIn, or YouTube, there's also, dare I say, a fatigue that sets in. And I'd purport partly why TikTok videos are only six seconds or 15 yeah. seconds. So if marketers want to engage their audience for longer duration, 15, 20 minutes, even 40 minutes, and be more intimate and develop a relationship over kind of like episodic over time, then audio presents an opportunity to do so. It's what we're doing yeah. here today through podcasts. Um, and I mean, some of the research is really quite staggering that um, Oberlo uh, published a study that 82% of podcast listeners spend more than seven hours a week listening to podcasts, um, one in five over 22 hours. And people are listening to about 10 different podcasts per month. So it's not yeah. like you're just finding one show and sticking to it. It tends to kind of be, um, as I say, evidence that supports this notion that smart marketers and business owners are moving from the eyes exclusively and onto the ears. So how did we respond to that is that we've now expanded from just a voice marketplace where you can hire a voice talent for maybe a commercial or, as I said, a, a phone system recording or corporate training video, somebody to narrate but we also realized, hey, maybe somebody needs a jingle at the intro of their podcast like today's show. Or maybe somebody needs um, some audio editing to, you know, once the podcast is recorded, as an example, perhaps remove the breaths and the mistakes along the way. So we've just, let's say, added these complementary or adjacent services that support the voice as the primary means of communicating, but have these other adjacent services. 
and it helped marketers get that audio content done. Well, I think that you bring up some interesting points about, you know, fatigue of, of video. And I know that you can, you can look at stats and go, video is growing and it's amazing and it's great and it's wonderful. And I do agree that it is. But one thing that I, I feel like is the, st- the, the stats haven't caught up to everyday real life. And here's what I mean by mm-hmm. that. Um, I, it, to me, it frustrates me when I want to watch or listen to some type of a teaching, let's say a, a webinar and I click on it and it's a video and I'm like, okay, that's fine. And I'll just have that playing in my browser while I'm working. And I go over to, you know, leave the video, let it run. And it, the player, whatever player that they've chosen, they've chosen to stop the video if they sense you've left the browser. So I know that, mm. you know, many browsers do that, but they know that you aren't watching the video. So they want to penalize and punish you for leaving that. Well, I don't feel like you need to watch someone's lips move to hear and understand and enjoy and consume what's being said. So I think that's where the power of audio comes in. And I think also that our time is really, really valuable. Like you mentioned about TikTok videos being very, very short. Well, even within audio, it should not be hours and hours on end because people aren't going to listen to it. So bite-sized chunks. And then having you having, you know, pivoted your business to support this industry, I feel is like the, the old Wayne Gretzky quote where he says, I don't, skate where the puck is, I skate where it's going. And that's where what you guys are doing. You're skating where the audio puck is headed in the industry. Absolutely. I, lo- I love that. And, uh, you know, g- growing up in, in Canada as well. So I know all about Wayne Gretzky <laughs> and uh, the various quotes and his leadership approach as well, too. But the, I think the audio presents, uh, it, it is funny that um, some video players do that. I mean, I've had that same experience just to, to empathize, if you will, with a uh, program called LinkedIn Learning which LinkedIn bought lynda.com years ago, and now it's LinkedIn yeah. Learning. And I actually, the, the video production is very high quality, but sometimes, as you said, I'm walking the dog, I'm doing something else, I'm yeah. preparing dinner, I I'm, I'm maybe want to listen in the car and just Bluetooth that LinkedIn Learning message through the speakers in the car, so it's a university on wheels. It's something yeah. Brian Tracy used to say years yeah. ago. And, and so that's the kind of um, experience that I think, think that audio presents. It's this multitasking where you know you have to do something idle or you want to be, you still want to learn on the go, right? And so it's this idea of like being informed and educated, but perhaps also entertained. And this concept of this theater of the mind can come in where I don't need the visuals necessarily. You actually are um, encouraging your, your imagination to grow in new ways by not necessarily having those visuals presented to you. So if you're in a creative endeavor and you want to hone your creative skills, Try listening to content. Maybe it's an audio book. Maybe it's a radio drama. And you start to visualize ideas in ways that you never had before because you'd kind of always just fallen back on a, on a video uh, experience. But you're, you, I think that you're, uh, it sounds like we're sharing a lot of the same experiences yeah. and, and appreciate audio as being, I'm going to call it like there's a large portion. I don't have the precise stat. There's a large portion of the, the population that learns best by listening. And yes. that's, so it sounds like you might be one of those people. I know I definitely am. I have over 500 audiobooks that I listen to on my phone over and over. I seem to listen to the same ones. I learn by listening. And I think there's a lot of people out there who are in a similar camp. And perhaps you're right. The technology should, the content is there, but the technology should uh, not punish, but as you say, reward that type of engagement and behavior to support that uh, po- uh, portion of the population. Yeah. Okay, so let's shift into um, if an entrepreneur, business owner is listening to this going, okay, uh, how can I spruce up and polish up my brand using audio? What are some of the things that they could be doing or keeping in mind that maybe they haven't thought of? Well, one thing is, you know, you know again, going to, to the c- comparison against, you know, visual medium, and let's use kind of graphic design, right? For, for decades upon decades, marketers and business owners have thought about their visual identity. They're, and there's even an entire language around it, the, the color, the shape, the space, right? How much white space there is, all of the, the, the typography or the fonts that are used. And so there's this entire lexicon around visual identity. What most business owners haven't thought about is how they sound. What is your audio identity or your sonic brand, if you will? And that can come, you know, some really first touch points are often just 
If, if you have a phone system, is there a greeting on your phone? What does that sound like? Um, and so before kind of necessarily rushing out and re-recording that, one of the exercises we encourage clients to do is develop, let's call it a, a, a character sketch of your brand. And the way you would do this is imagine if your brand, you could personify your brand and they walked into a restaurant or walked into the room. What would they look like? What would they sound like? You know, would everyone stop and head turned or are they more subtle? You know, what kind of clothing are they wearing? And as you de develop this character sketch of what your brand would look like, you can actually translate a lot of that to sonic qualities. Yeah. So, and those might turn into authoritative, right? It might turn into sympathetic or it might turn into sarcastic and funny and yes. humorous or, you know, so there's, there's an entire spectrum. So that would be a first step before you consider taking on a redo of a phone system recording or perhaps starting a podcast, I think is a great way if there's an intro to your podcast. And maybe you're not ready to start a whole show of your own and kind of commit to that for 10 or 20 episodes. Maybe you just want to advertise on somebody else's podcast and get your name out there that way. Well, still, yet again, think about the, the, the tone of the message. And one uh, little bit of secret sauce, we've produced hundreds of thousands of pieces of audio content. And we ask producers and advertisers, what is, it, what is this artistic direction you know, and that you're looking for? And time and time again, it matches the audience that they're trying to reach. Yes. So when you imagine your brand walking into a room, they probably look like and sound like the target audience, your ICP, your ideal customer profile, or ideal client profile, the person that you're trying to reach. That's probably what you should sound like. So if you are, are marketing or you serve a local market, what do your people around you sound like? If you're trying to sound, you know, maybe you have a luxury brand, brand and it's more sophisticated, and you're trying to reach audiences from around the world, you know, maybe a more, you know, exotic or, um, you know, Commanding. international type. Exactly. My audience might, you know, or maybe there's this kind of um, mystique around, um, you know, kind of a James Bond spy, you know, because yeah. that's, you're trying to get, you, uh, you know, align with your audience and what, uh, what they might be thinking about and how do they view themselves and then provide that through this, you know, through the audio channel. So there's, there's a lot, there's a lot going on yeah. there, but I would, I would start with that brand, um, kind of that brand essence of yep. what would they sound, what would it sound like, and then consider um, those various channels that you could explore as a, as a business well, owner. I think there's a lot of um, branding consultants out there that would take someone, a, a company through that same exercise as it relates to your brand colors, your font, your website. Awesome. Well, maybe the the one thing that they're leaving out that you need to remember is exactly what you just said. And it made me think of something else. Once you've got that dialed in, and then maybe there is the intros to this or the phone of this and that. But here's something that I would um, wonder if an HR person or a, a CEO would, would perk their ears up to. How about all of the um, training manuals or the um, updates to this policy or that policy? Maybe for consideration, maybe you still have those because it's traditional, but maybe you send out a quick audio blip from the VP of or the CEO or whatever. Maybe if it's a big enough company, you're, you're the CEO sitting down doing like an internal private podcast, you know, episode for just their company. It's not going to iTunes. It's not going, it's just a quick audio so that for the same reasons. You're busy. You can listen to this while you work. Hey, guys, uh, welcome to you know November. Uh, this is going to be a great month because remember, we're going to keep this in mind. Remember, our mission and vision is I think that there's so many cases for audio. Now, um, for your company, Voices, you, the CEO would record that and then send it into you guys to do some polish polishing up and sprucing it up and making it, you know, maybe some audio tracks up underneath of it for music and things like that. Yeah, exactly. And that's uh, one of those, what I would call a use case or an example that absolutely happens, you know, call, call it if you're over a thousand employees in your business, you know, you're looking for ways to how do yeah. I commute, communicate in a one to many, right? One of me to many people that I'm trying to reach in an efficient manner and, you know, dialing into a system just to get the content recorded or even using the voice memo notes on a, on a phone, just the audio recorder on a phone and then sending it to an audio editor just, just to uh, kind of spruce up. Absolutely, that, that, uh, that type of content is done. And audio is so authentic. That's what's interesting about this. If it comes directly from the message bearer, um, I think that's uh, really key. Now, if you 
a lot of people aren't comfortable in their own voice, to be honest with you. People, for whatever reason, don't like the sound of their own voice, and that's okay, too. That's why you can work with a voice talent who becomes the audio ambassador. They, they are the person who is sharing your message on your behalf. And the talent, you know, they're, they're out here kind of full-time doing this type of work. So if something, you have another update or a change happens, you can easily, you know, re, you know rehire, if you will, or, or work with that same talent again. But I, I love those kind of uh, examples that you gave of an HR professional or, uh, or a CEO or a leader at a company on how are they trying to be authentic with their own voice and reach, uh, reach an audience. Yeah, love it. So let's talk a little bit about what you do to make this accessible on your platform for freelancers for both the um, uh, CEO or the entrepreneur to go, I need this service or this voice talent. But what about the freelancer? Your platform also gives them the opportunity to maybe um, uh, provide their voiceover talent to people looking for it. Yeah, the, a lot of the freelancers on Voices have, you know, uh, a, a varied journeys on how they got here. They might come from a musical background. They might come from a performing arts and theater. Or maybe they just have a great voice, they, the, the gift of a great voice. They told their whole life, they, you know, that they're great storytellers. How do I, you know, transform that into these uh, or, or tra- have these transferable skills and um, pursue a freelance career? And so that's what uh, the talent do. We refer to them as voice talent. Uh, on voices.com and, and they can sign up and create a profile. And then by doing so, you, one of the things that's, you know, different than perhaps a LinkedIn profile on voices, you are doing just that uploading samples of your voice. And think of these as your, you know, a, a demo, like a, a, a highlight reel or a show reel where the demo, what you would have is, you know, there's kind of three main categories, a commercial demo, a narration demo, and a character demo if you're kind of into character work, but the commercial and narration, think of commercials like, a 60 second um, commercial of American Airlines, PepsiCo, Doritos, and Hilton Hotels, like bop, 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 right? It moves very quickly for like yeah. small little snippets, like a highlight reel. And then the narration may be longer form. That's where you might have an example of corporate narration, like a training video, or maybe a documentary for National Geographic. Those are the kind of the difference between the two. So you would upload those samples of your voice. Um, there's all kinds of scripts that are available online. We have a whole catalog as well for free of scripts that People want to practice to create that uh, to create that demo, and then talent. Um, once you have that profile, clients could either invite you to a job or you can reply to jobs uh, through the through the platform. And that's really kind of how uh, how it works is these two sided freelance marketplace. Really, us serving as that trusted intermediary to bring the two parties together. I absolutely love it. I think that is such a neat concept where um, you've taken from the genesis of your brick and mortar studio to a a cloud-based platform, you know, and it's very similar in my mind to um, Uber who took, you know, hey, normally you have to go call a cab. Well, now we're going to create a connection between people who need a ride and people that have a vehicle to drive you, and we're going to just help it facilitate that. Well, now you're creating that connection with people that have some recording equipment to people that need to have some recordings and bringing them together, and it's all, you know, you don't need to fly into a studio. You don't need to get hotels. So, you know, get your yeah. nice, you know, Yeti microphone or whatever you're going to use and, up, and, and uh, upload some samples. And then if you're an entrepreneur, CEO, business owner, think of some ways that the audio brand can be communicated to your internal employees, to your external target audience, and really amplify your brand that way. I just love what you're doing there, David. Um, If someone is interested in either side of that equation, what's the best way they can reach out and connect with you guys? Yeah, the best thing is just to go to the website, voices.com, easy uh, domain name, and uh, it says what we do in a single word. So you can go to voices.com, sign up for free. That's really the best thing to do. You can one-click with your Google account or Apple account, and it gets you right in. Um, that's, and then, um, you know, de- depending on kind of what side of the marketplace you're, you're interested in, you kind of pick that uh, as the first step. That's really the best place um, to get started. And then if someone's uh, curious and wants to kind of follow along our story and hear about some of this type of thinking about how to create and build out your audio brand. Um, I've been publishing a lot more on LinkedIn, just right within the feed, you know, um, some of the research that we've uncovered and uh, some of the thinking around this transformation of how marketers have really um, saturated the eyes and are moving on to the ears as an opportunity um, to consider for years to come. Excellent. I love it. I just love what you're doing. Thank you so much for coming on today. It's been a pleasure talking with you. My pleasure. Thanks, Mike.
You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.